Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Making the Case with I am Anthony Denmark, founder of Becoming JD. We have a phenomenal lineup planned for you guys today. We do know that can you believe that the 2020 year is almost here? Nevertheless, it's our job to make sure that we're utilizing every day, every moment, every second that we have to make sure that we're taking steps to make sure that we're living our loyal dreams. Again, as we let the room fill up, I want to encourage you guys to be able to use this session as an opportunity to get questions answered. The whole goal of making the case is not only for you guys to be able to speak to people who are actually featured on our page, but also to try to get your questions answered. So irregardless of where you are in your journey to becoming an attorney, we want to make sure that we're dropping gems to make sure that you guys are leaving these sessions prepared and equipped to take the next step in your journey to becoming an attorney. So on today's session, we are going to be talking specifically about gap year. I get a lot of questions in my DMs about people asking about what do I need to do if I'm in a gap year? What do I need to do if it's been a while since I've been out of school? And of course, we do know that that road may be just a little bit different, uh, but nevertheless, that road and that path to getting into law school is still very much possible. And so we are going to have a guest who's been where you guys are literally a couple of years ago. She just, of course, just passed the bar. We are proud of her. We are proud of everybody out there who's passed the bar. And if, in fact, you have not passed the bar, understand that with each day, with each step, you are coming that much closer to fulfilling your dream of passing the bar. So your hand will be raised up. I swear. Uh, but nevertheless, again, my name is Anthony, and I am the founder of Becoming JD. We started Becoming JD for the whole sole purpose of making sure that you guys get access uh, to resources and information that could be able to help you guys get into law school. Because, hey, let's just go ahead and address the elephant in the room. When you look in law schools, when you look at law school websites, you see very few of people who look like me and you. Nevertheless, we are definitely there. And nevertheless, we are definitely trying to do everything in our power to not only be successful, but also to try to bridge, bridge, create breadcrumbs for you guys to be able to follow as well. We do know that right now we are definitely in what I would call crunch time, right? You guys still got the LSAT still popping up. You're trying to make those decisions. Should I retake the LSAT again or should I be satisfied with my score? You're, of course, looking at the deadlines that are approaching. You're starting to get nervous, and I want you guys to take a breath. I want you guys to relax. I want you guys to understand that right now, if you're nervous, it's because you're working hard. If, in fact, you have a sense of anxiety, it's because you have invested a lot in this process. And so that nervousness is okay. Uh, but nevertheless, we want to make sure that we are not being in a position where we are so nervous, so scared, that we're not moving. So we want to make sure that we're giving you guys those tips. So as usual, as we begin most of our sessions, please tell me where it is that where you're viewing us from and also tell me where it is you are in your journey uh, to uh, becoming a lawyer. Uh, I see that our featured guest is already in the room, so I encourage you, Jasmine, feel free, please, uh, to hit the join button, ask to join, and I'll be sure to accept you so we can go ahead and drop that split screen and drop these gems for a lot of these people out there who have questions about their journey and have questions about overcoming some of the obstacles out there uh, that you and I have experienced and I'm sure a lot of other people out there as well. So we got people here from D.C. Stand up. What's the weather like out there? I know the weather down here in St. Louis is fairly cold. Nevertheless, we know that when it's cold, it's definitely a whole lot easier to stay inside and get our grind on and get our work on. We ain't about no, uh, <laughs> we are definitely not about that uh, Netflix and chill. We all about that LSAT and chill. We all about getting them scholarships and getting them acceptance letters. That's priority one. So we'll go ahead and have Jasmine join the line. We got Callie in the house. We got North Carolina. Keep studying. Keep grinding. I encourage you guys to keep working. Oh, we got a two well in there. Hey, I hope you guys are getting ready for finals. I know this around the corner. Realize that the work that you're investing in now is going to pay off later. Don't get too... Don't get too secure in yourself. Realize that you made it through one L year, but that same grind and that same effort that you used for one L year, you're going to have to use 
uh, in 2L years. So don't take your foot off the pedal. So we got Oregon in the house. That's what I am talking about. Seattle, Washington. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and get our uh, featured guests on the line. And let's go ahead and drop, drop. Woo, we got Spain. That is fantastic. Continue to fill the chat box off. And one of the promises that we make is irregardless of what your question may be, it may not be something pertaining to this session, but I assure you that we are going to address your questions. You will leave this session with your questions answered. M-Town in the house. That's what's up. All right, let's go ahead and get our guests in, and let's go ahead and start dropping these gems because, hey, that's what you guys are here for. Started making the case in the first place. Fantastic. Hello, hello, hello. Ms. Hi, Mark. how are you? I am doing fine. Again, uh, welcome to Making the Case. Uh, Jasmine, of course, we are so proud of you. You just, of course, got sworn in. You just passed the bar. you that new, new Esquire. I am so real fresh, fresh out. <laughs> Brand new. <laughs> but, but nevertheless, uh, thank you so much for joining us for this session. Oftentimes, we get a lot of questions. Uh, that people have. And I say to myself, let's go ahead and get these questions answered by some of the phenomenal people who are doing the things that they want to do. So uh, I'll give you the floor. You can drop some gems and tell them about who you are and uh, a little bit about your journey. Then we can go ahead and drop into some of these questions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I am not a Tennessee native. I actually moved from Tampa. So I graduated from a small private law school or small private college in 2014. Um, and I took two years off in between undergrad and law school uh, because my GPA was absolute trash, like trash, trash. Um, so I took two years off to try to like recalibrate, think about how am I going to get get into law school. Um, while I was working for two years, I worked as a legal assistant. I worked as a paralegal at um, public defender's office at a small uh, at a medium sized law firm in Tampa. And then from there, I kind of just started tossed my application at schools where I knew that they did a holistic approach and oh. didn't focus primarily on GPAs. So um, they took my entire application into account. And so those are the schools that I focused my applications on. Got in, went through, and that's where, that's kind of where I am today. Got in, went through, now she's ESQ. That's what's up. Yep. Now listen, I want you guys to understand the reason why we always start each of these sessions off is with an opportunity for you guys to find out more about the guests. It's just the smile on their face that you see in the features. It's because their experience is full of gems that a lot of you guys need. A lot of you guys are in a process right now where you're saying to yourself, do I need to be applying to law school now or should I possibly wait a year? So, Jazz, we're just going to break down your introduction, some things to drop. We want to try to go through the process of some of the decisions that you made. Now, you do not have to tell your GPA that you had an undergrad, but nevertheless, put us in the mindset of some of the decisions that you uh, were weighing when making a decision of either one applying to school or taking two years off and applying after a little bit of time later. Yeah, um, I have no shame in telling my undergraduate GPA I had, um, I had ADD that I didn't know about. Um, so I graduated with undergrad with like a 2.3. Um, so I went through that and I sat there, looked at it and I was like, well, that sucks. Um, and so my process was, well, I need to take the LSAT, but I knew, so I started with getting an LSAT company, something I know that, um, I could sit down in the classroom, learn all the tricks and tools and all that good stuff. Um, and then get my LSAT score as high as I possibly could, and then use that as my jumping off point when applying to law schools. So that was my thought process there. And then um, I did all of my law school research online because I was working full time. So I actually wasn't able to go to any of the law schools that I applied to. Um, uh, I actually, UT, I ended up going to University of Tennessee School of College of Law and um, their school kind of called to me because they did a more practical approach and they focused on clinical experience and getting your hands dirty and all that good stuff. So um, I don't know if that answered your question, but that's, oh, that's it does, it is. It's a lot of people out there, Jasmine, who are trying to make that decision in regards to what they need to do next. And oftentimes one of the biggest mistakes that people presume is I call it the IG, the Instagram world, right? So we see, we see them being sworn in, we see them uh, being Cali, but oftentimes we think because we've seen 
the success or the final outcomes that we uh, immediately think that if my GPA is this certain thing or if, in fact, I do not fit this ideal framework, that maybe I cannot be a lawyer or maybe I cannot get into law school. Uh, but nevertheless, there are still so many routes out there for people to be able to navigate and travel. And you are definitely proof of that. I know one of the things that you briefly talked about is about being diagnosed with ADHD afterwards, you know, at, while you were in school. And oftentimes, you know, one of the things that's very different about the law school setting than it is with undergrad is the whole testing system is completely different. Mm -hmm. and so oftentimes people are very much aware that, uh, that law school is different. And so the fact that you were able to step back and make the decision to, I guess, assess yourself and see what you needed to do better is a, a, a stance that a lot of people out there who are listening to this, watching this, I need to make sure that they're being able to do. Now, of course, we do. When we look at the LSAT scores and the GPAs, we do see that the average LSAT score, average again, is uh, 152. The average GPA is 3.32. But nevertheless, there are people getting into law school. There are people mm -hmm. way in spite of, and you're proof of that. Now, one of the things I definitely want to touch base on you is, what did you do during that two years? Because a lot of people, either one, they don't get accepted into law school the first time, and they make the mistake of saying, you know what, I'm just going to wait. I'm just going to chill and try again next year. So what did you do to invest your time in between those two years? Because that time actually does count. It does matter how you use it. Yeah, um, I worked full time uh, first for the first year. I think I worked at the public defender's office in Tampa. Um, so I was a legal assistant there. And then I moved from there to working as a paralegal, more of a paralegal role at Wilkes and McHugh, which is a, a medium-sized law firm in Tampa. Um, so really, my focus was getting as much practical experience to actually be sure that this is what I wanted to do. Because you can sit there and say, I want to go to law school all day. But if you don't actually know what lawyers do, then you're not really going to get anything you know, out of it. Um, I don't recommend that for everyone. Because sometimes you can get stuck in a rut where you're like, all right, I'm making money. I'm doing this. I'm on the grind. And so I don't really want to go back to school. Um, but if you already have it in your head that you're going to go back to school, then there's nothing that's going to stop you from doing that. Yeah, I heard that, right? She said it takes more than want to in regards to being a lawyer. You got to be about that action. And that means stepping outside of your comfort zone. That means really going out there and utilizing the resources. You know, this thing called Google to uh, find resources that are out there, to find opportunities that are out there. Because ultimately, once you begin the process of developing a hustle, one thing you'll learn very quickly is anybody who goes to law school, anybody who practices law, they have to be able to develop some form of hustle or grind or some form of resiliency because that's the only way that you make it through. Am I right, Jasmine? Yeah, no, I agree with that. Only way. There's no such thing as the easy button. And anybody who tells you that they didn't study for the LSAT, they lying. Anybody who tells you they didn't study when they were in law school, they lying. Because you have to work hard for this. And this is nothing. It is just because you have to work hard does not mean that you're disqualified from being a lawyer. Just because you may have found yourself in a position where you may have had to take time off. Guess what? There are plenty of lawyers out there that are doing it. Taking time off is probably the best thing to do. Because guess what? Jasmine could have tried to go and not been ready and flunked out and had what? A whole bunch of money that she had to pay back. So sometimes you have to assess yourself overall in order to decide what you need to do what's best for you. Now, one thing I definitely do want to touch base on with you is, uh, and this is a problem that a lot of people are having right now, mm -hmm. is how do they go about, how did you go about getting your letters of recommendation? Because, you know, you take some time off of school, the professors, you know, they may have forgot about you, but you know, you've got to get those LORs. So what was your a strategy that you used to get them LORs? So them LORs got to be glowing, especially when you take time off. Yes. Um, I would say think out of the outside of the box. Um, they don't have to come from a professor. They can come from your employer or somebody who's your super direct supervisor talking about your work ethic. Um, and then you, I got my, I think one of my letter recommendations came from one of my supervisors that I work with at the public defender's office. Um, he was actually the elected public defender. So it looked a little bit, I guess, more mm -hmm. official because he was actually a lawyer. Um, and so, I mean, I was, I was just more pressed on making sure that I thought outside of the box and got 
less about who it was and more about the quality of the letter. Absolutely. And she, Jasmine's to totally correct. Because one of the things that I tell you guys is when you think about this whole process, this past year about 1.12 million people applied to law school. That's a lot of people, right? And so what you have to challenge yourself to do is say, what can I do different? What can I present to them that's going to be able to help make me stand out? We say stand out a lot, but oftentimes we do not give it real context or real meaning. Standing out means, you know what, doing something that distinguishes you from somebody else who may have the same LSAT as you, the same GPA as you, from the same school as you, from the same background as you. The more you are able to push yourself to be able to provide something that is against the norm, that is different, the better off you're going to be. Because oftentimes what happened with Jasmine, which was phenomenal, is very few people get letters of recommendations from lawyers, which you would think would be a great idea to do, right? And people oftentimes rely on professors. And I love my professors. I do. I love them. But nevertheless, the whole goal of a letter of recommendation is to be able to have someone who can speak specifically about your performance, about your ability and your, your ability to be prepared for law school. Now, Sending, having a professor who you got a great grade in, of course, they could talk about that grade, but what is they going to say about your ability to be able to perform in a law school setting? And getting letters of letters like this are something that's very possible. It does not, does not require you to be born with a silver spoon in your mouth. It does not require you to be able to be in the who's who uh, situation. It just requires you to be able to navigate in spaces and find out who the people are that can give you the, the, record, the letter of recommendation that you need. So tell us a little bit about how you actually found yourself at the public defender's office. Because people sometimes, they're afraid to put themselves in those positions to ask, but hey, you, you, don't, you don't get this far without asking. No, um, I am not afraid to shoot an email. So I think I ended up, um, I got the original public defender's office position while I was still in college. And I emailed them and I was like, hey, I really just want to get an idea of what you guys do. So can I just sit in the office and help out? Um, and they said, sure, come on out. So I sat there and helped out. And then eventually, I think the following summer, they said, why don't you just stay for a summer internship and this time we'll pay you. And I said, cool, let's do that. So I worked through with them all the way through until the end. They offered me a job after graduation. Um, I ended up, <laughs> I ended up actually turning it down um, because I wanted to go to Tampa, but um, to a different public defender's office. So they gave me a recommendation to go over there. So, but um, I don't believe in burning bridges ever. I think you need to keep your channels of communication open, even if you're leaving a job. Um, say thank you this has been great keep in contact because you never know when you'll need them so and i reached back out to the public defender office in lakeland which is where i originally turned out the job offer and they gave me a letter of recommendation for taking the um or for going into law school i mean when it comes down to it when you don't have options you have to make your options and sometimes that requires you to go and put yourself out there but nevertheless if you really about this law your life if you really about this dream, then that's just exactly what you have to do. Now, of course, Jasmine was able to make it work. But guess what? Along the way, I'm sure, Jasmine, did you get any no's along the way? Did you know we're not interested? We're not hiring right now? More than I can count. Yep. <laughs> Without a doubt. Um, I can't. I mean, I, I legitimately got discouraged, I think, throughout my law school career because I got so many no's. And I was like, this is not meant for me. I don't need to do this. I'm tired. This sucks. Whatever, whatever. Um, but, I mean, all you need is one yes. So that's really where I ended up. And now I am living in Nashville, working as an attorney. So Nashville, Tennessee. Now, one of the things, again, I, I always tell people, it's like, we see, we see the end result, but we oftentimes do not get to see uh, the grind that it takes to get there. Uh, one of my whole biggest goals of this making the case is I really want us to be able to normalize the struggle because the struggle is a part of the process. Oftentimes you see the, the tailored suits and red bottoms. You see the, uh, the plaques for the awards. And you be like, man, they just had it all together the whole time. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. The whole process. There's so many things that you have to go through. And the whole thing is having to be able to re realize that those no's lead to yeses. Those rejections will eventually turn itself into 
being able to completely direct you to where you need to go. I know it's a lot of people out there right now who are looking at their LSAT scores and are very discouraged about what to do next, uh, trying to figure out if they need to retake the test or uh, completely contemplating just giving up on the whole thing altogether. Uh, what advice would you offer to them uh, who are some people who are in that particular situation right now? Um, as far as low LSAT scores, take it again. Um, and use your resources. I know it sounds like it's expensive, um, but get what you can afford and use whatever resources you can to study. Um, because some people can go into the LSAT dry, like they can. Um, it's not going to be their best effort, but it's sometimes people's brains are just wired that way. Um, mine wasn't. I studied. And um, by the time I took a class, uh, it raised my score like 12 points. So um, I was happy with the money that I invested into that because it was an investment into my future. Um, and if you're getting discouraged looking at it and you feel like you want to give up, then I think if at some point you're like, I want to give up, I think you need to reassess on whether what do you want to do? Do you want to be a lawyer um, or, or not? I mean, I don't think you should go, don't ever go to law school because somebody's like, you should be a lawyer. Go to law school because you want to be a lawyer. Because if you're going into law school some, based on somebody else's um, definition or of what you should do, then you're not going to make it. Law school's not easy. Um, it's probably the hardest three years I've ever, I've ever put into. And then the last three months after the bar might be the hardest three months of my life. So, um, yeah, I mean, get, a, get on your grind and be prepared to stay on that grind for the next three or four years because it's going to be rough. Absolutely. But it's worth it. And the thing about it is understanding, I hope that you guys get from these sessions, is realizing that the struggle is real. But you know what? The, the results of your sacrifices, oh, boy, feel so much better. Feel so much better. For some reason, when you got that license, when you pass those classes, all the tiredness and the fatigue that so happened to just disappear. It, it, just, it just didn't matter as much anymore because it was worth it. Uh, one of the things I definitely also want to make sure that we spend some time talking about in this session uh, specifically is we know that we also have a lot of people right now who are in the process of finals. Right? Finals is around the corner. You know, if you get Thanksgiving, you start thinking about finals. Uh, when, you were in the, when you were in law school not too long ago, what it, what did you when when did you start the process in regards to trying to secure clerkship opportunities or submitting applications of interest uh, for jobs uh, for that summer? January, um, one L year. It was January because everything nothing else matters but your first semester grades. So um, if your first semester grades aren't as high as they possibly can be, then you're not going to get a job for the summer. So you have to. You had, well, let me rephrase that because my GPA was not as high as it could be and I still got a job for the summer, but that's irrelevant. Try to get your, your grades as high as you possibly can get them um, because that's just going to open up more opportunities for you and people will be asking you to take their job um, and it'll be a lot easier. Um, so I would say January is probably the best time to start. Uh, don't even think about applications or OCIs or none of that until you've, brought, you've breathed over Christmas break. Um, Christmas break is your time to start looking at applications and getting your resume out there and talking to the career center and all that good stuff. And absolutely. And one of the things I would definitely want to, because I always want to make sure that we talk to everybody wherever they are in their journey so they can make sure they can get some information mm -hmm. from you. If you have questions, please drop them in the, quest, in the, in the below and we'll be sure and get to them. Uh, one of the things we want to make sure and tell people is, listen, if you're in law school, if you're a 1L, I know you don't like Civ Pro. Right. If you didn't like Civ Pro, I please understand. Nobody likes Civ Pro. Am I right, Jasper? I I enjoyed Civ Pro one more <laughs> than Civ Pro two. I like the discovery and all that good stuff. That was easy, but 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 understand this: Civ Pro will be the most important class that you take your yes. one. Because ultimately, when it comes to jobs, you have when it comes to jobs. The first thing I say is, no, don't get me wrong. Crim law and all this stuff is entertaining and fun and torch. You love it because, and, <laughs> but they want to be able to know how do you know the rules? And second, they want to know, well, do you write well? And so even oftentimes the classes that you don't like, in my instance, it was uh, that legal writing, legal research and writing and Civ Pro. So understand that those classes are incredibly important. They mm -hmm. may be 
The cases may be very unentertaining. Of course, not going to be like torts, but nevertheless, incredibly important. One of the things that you guys are going to have to do, and I'm sure that uh, Jasmine can attest to this, is you're going to have to get out your feelings. It ain't about what you like. It ain't about what you're interested in. It's about what you need to do to get the grade. Am I right, Jasmine? I agree with that, without a doubt. You need to suck it up and do what you need to do. Do I would highly recommend putting all of your attention on legal research and legal writing. Mm -hmm. Um because lawyers write, that's what they do, that's how they live, that's how they make a living. Um, so unless you're solely going into only litigation, which is highly unlikely, because even there you're still writing, right. um, I would put every, every focus that you have into making sure your writing is as good as it can be. Absolutely, so I hope you guys got that one L's and two L's. I know that you didn't got a little comfortable, you done made it through the one L year, you're like, ah, oh, I got it figured out. You can't take your foot off the gas. You may have figured out the formula, but realize that the bar has now been raised in regards to the standard, in regards to what a B is and what an A minus is. Because what a, what may have been a B in one L year may be a C minus uh, second year. So you cannot take the foot off the gas. It's so easy to get complacent and it's so easy to get comfortable. So please do not listen to the whispers. But let's go ahead and go to the chat log and see if we got any questions. All right, so somebody asked, he said, what would you say is a low LSAT score? Um, Jasmine, you want to take a stab at this and I'll fill it? I don't think there is such a thing as a low LSAT score, depending, because it all depends on where you're applying. Um, I would say that go to the best school that you can get into with the highest LSAT score that you have. Um, because I think a lot of your, and depending on what kind of job you want to have or what practice you want to go in, that's really going to drive what law school you go to or where you go to law school. Um, so for me, I was trying to stay in the Southeast. Um, so I didn't, I wasn't really bummed when, or wasn't really, um, focused on applying to NYU or Cornell or all the big schools up there because that wasn't my focus. I focused on schools in D.C., Virginia, Tennessee, Georgia, Florida. I was staying in that area. So I think you should just focus on what schools, what the school's LSAT scores require of you that you want to get into and go from there. Absolutely. And just to fill in uh, with a couple more informa helpful information, oftentimes the LSAT score being what's, what may be relatively low may be based off of the school to which way you're applying to. So I'd encourage you to go to the law school profiles of the schools that you're interested in and look at their LSAT profile, their law school profile. Every year, law schools permit, submit a profile. I think it's called a, sex, a, a 409 form. And with that 409 form, it lists out the highest and lowest LSAT scores that were taken that current, in that current year and also the highest and lowest GPAs that were taken that current year. This is a great tool that you guys should be able to utilize to be able to help identify schools that you fit within the profile. Now, if in fact you do not fit it in the profile within either your LSAT or your GPA, you should consider that school to be a, what we call it, a dream school or a reach school. But I encourage you guys to be able to look at your LSAT scores and try to find schools that match you. If you're not in that range, then I encourage you to look at your LSAT scores. Look at your score reports. People just look at the final score. Look at your score reports. Explore that. See what it is that you need to work on. And you got to move intentionally and with purpose. That's what you have to do this whole journey. That's what Jasmine had to do uh, when she took the LSAT. That's what Jasmine had to do in law school. That's what Jasmine definitely had to do on the bar. You have to be intentional. You have to be able to identify the areas that you need to work on because that's the only way that you're going to improve. That's how Jasmine got that score of 12 points. And that's also how she beasted the bar the first time she took it up in Tennessee. Hmm. <laughs> you felt that one, huh? <laughs> yeah, can't, it still hits me. still hits me. That was three months. But, I can't get that back. But the thing is, you have to be intentional with the process, okay? And you can't, your scores can't be raised, but it requires you to actually put in the work. And that's not just opening a book. That's exploring your LSAT report, score report and seeing the areas that you need to work on. And that's how you focus on getting your score better. Is that what you did to get your score up 12 points, Jasmine? Yes. Um, I paid for a, an LSAT course. I focused on what I need to focus on. I focused on my strengths. 
Um, I actually enjoyed logic games, yeah. strangely enough. I love doing those. Um, so I did a lot of those just, just to get good at them because I sucked at um, – I was really good at the reading comprehension too, but there was another section that I was just terrible at. So um, I focused on those and hoped for the best and got me into law school, so. The rest of it. <laughs> All right, so we got some more questions. Somebody had yeah, let's go. regards to uh, undergrad advice. Now, I guess that undergrad advice would be pertaining to uh, what courses to take or what uh, organizations or how to bolster their application if, in fact, they're in undergrad right now. What, what, what gems you got for them, Dan? Yeah, um, take what you enjoy and take stuff that you'll do well in. Um, I have a degree in English literature, so clearly I had no choice but to go to law school or get a master's. So um, I enjoyed it, though, so that's really what mattered. So I took English literature. I also have a minor in ceramic art. Can't do anything with that, but I enjoyed it, and it was a 4.0 GPA. Um, so uh, I would say take what you enjoy because your major literally doesn't matter when you're going to law school. It doesn't matter. As long as your GPA is high, you could have majored in basket weaving, um, and <laughs> you're, you're totally fine. So um, people who are focused on pre-law, if you enjoy pre-law, go for it. If you don't, find something else to do. It doesn't matter. Yeah, in fact, right now with law schools, law schools are really looking into, if you're a computer science major or an engineer, yeah. those are some of the majors right now that they are really recruiting hard at. And mm -hmm. we wanted to go ahead and get rid of that men. All right. You don't have to be a political science major. You do not have to be a pre-law major to go to law school. Unfortunately, I did not know that. And I went to got a political science degree. But nevertheless, you know, I made it through. But understand that you want to be able to pick something like Jasmine said that you are going to be interested in. Because if you're interested in it, it's going to show with your grades. And that's something that's going to be a huge calling card when it comes to law schools. And let's see. We've got some more questions in here. Again, mm -hmm. let me introduce you. Uh, we are, of course, here making the case. Uh, we have the pleasure of having Jasmine McCullough, Esquire, brand new, new Esquire, who is joining us to be able to help drop some dreams, ask some, some questions about her experience, and also, of course, trying to help you guys do the same thing, because one SQ is not enough. We're trying to get some more of you guys on the, on the, on the ball. Let's see here. So I said, I am taking a gap year this, this next school year. How should I still be preparing for my law journey? Um, it depends on why I guess you're taking a gap year. If you're taking the gap year because you graduated college a year early, then cool. You do you. You're good. Enjoy it. Um, as long as GPA is great, probably do something productive, maybe travel, maybe volunteer. Um, but enjoy that year because it's going to be rough the next three years. Oh, yeah. Um, if you're taking it off because you have a... Um, you need to take time off just for mental health reasons or whatever, GPA, whatever. Um, think about what you really want, whether you want to go to law school, whether you want to reassess. Um, if you want to go to law school, I would start calling um, the recruitment offices for law schools and get, a, get, get your name out there. Um, nine to the ten, the people that are talking to you aren't, don't have a real say in the applications, but they can say, hey, I talked to this person, they were nice, or no, I talked to this person, and I don't really feel that. So um, I did talk to a few of the recruiting offices that I, of the law schools I were applying to that were like my reach schools, um, and I ended up not getting denial, but I got waitlisted and accepted to um, one of the schools that I eventually didn't go to. I went to UT, but either way, I would prepare so it depends on which way or what you're doing your gap year for absolutely and just to add on this she's dropping gems y'all i hope you guys got pen and paper and writing them down because this is something that you guys need to know all right so again one of the things that i think is be fantastic you have to understand is that when you're applying to law school they're evaluating your entire application so whenever there is definitely time missed you're going to have to address or explain it in some manner and so even though it will be great to say that, hey, you know, I applied last year and I'm applying, applying again next year, the whole expectation is that you have con you're constantly growing. You're constantly evolving. So they want to be able to know that you have utilized that time and invested your time into really showcasing your interest in the law. One of the things, the biggest mistakes that a lot of you guys make out there 
is y'all sit here and say, I wanted to be a lawyer since I was six years old, which is fantastic. But then I look at your resume or I look at your application and there's nothing in there that shows that you are really passionate about the law. And so understand that you, you want to make sure that if, in fact, this is something that you want to do, that it shows through, especially if you have to find yourself taking a gap year. Now, one of the things that I definitely want to make sure I spend some time doing to you guys is we know that right now a lot of you guys are going on visits, right? A lot of you guys are visiting schools. And uh, uh, Jasmine said something that made me think about it, is in addition to contacting your recruiting officers at the law schools, you know, it's this thing called Instagram. And it's this thing called bosses at every law school in the country. And what I would encourage, or HBNAs, or losses, or a whole bunch of different type of organizations out there uh, that are an invaluable resource for people to reach out to if, in fact, you're interested in a particular law school. I had a particular client who did not have a great experience at a law school uh, because she felt that she didn't have anybody there who was representative of her. And so I want to encourage you guys that before you make those commitments to reach out to go on these visits, invest in your time, I would encourage you guys to reach out to the Black Law Student Associations on most of, the, uh, most of these campuses. And a lot of these people are warm and they look forward to an opportunity to talk about their school. Uh, because honestly, at the end of the day, you want to make sure that when you are making a decision, an expensive decision about where to go to law school, it'd be great to be able to get a perspective uh, from somebody who may, you know, be able to relate to you or maybe able to have or share some of the same experiences um, uh, that you may be venturing into. So you want to make sure that you're prepared. Do you have anything to add, Jasmine? I don't. Definitely reach out to your connections. Um, they come in from weird places. Right. You never know whose friend is, of a friend is a lawyer that went to school this one time, this place you want to go to. So um, tell everybody that you possibly can to that you're trying to go to law school and reach out for advice. I, I mean, let's be honest. In the DMs for a whole bunch of crazy other stuff. We go in to send messages for to find out about deals on um, Popeyes chicken or all this other type of crazy mess. So make sure that you're also utilizing the resource of Instagram to be able to try to invest in your dreams. Uh, we're going to be talking about this a little bit later on uh, Thursday with another guest. But nevertheless, what you guys can be able to understand is that Instagram is a resource where you are actually now able to get in contact with lawyers, with judges with organizations. There used to be a time where it was not possible for us to be able to make those particular type of contacts with people who may be able to help you or provide information to you. But now you can. And so I encourage you guys to reach out to these bar associations, reach out to these black law students associations, reach out to losses, reach out to HBNA, reach out to NLSSA, reach out to these organizations because they will love to be able to tell you about their experience and honestly it's something that i did when i applied to law school before instagram and stuff existed but nevertheless it's something i encourage you guys to do you'll be very glad that you did um but let's see here do we have any other questions let's see here i think we got all our questions well again i want to thank you guys for taking the time i want to thank jasmine for taking the time to uh yeah, absolutely questions if, in fact, you guys missed the beginning of this session, it will, of course, be available for you to view and review again and again on IG Live. If you have questions, continue to drop them, and we'll be sure to answer them. Again, thank you, Jasmine, for taking some time to speak to our village. Uh, do you have any parting words before we let you go? Absolutely. Um, good luck. Stay focused and keep grinding. It'll work out no matter what. Out. Talk to you guys later, future lawyers. Keep grinding. Be productive. It will happen if you want it to. So let's make it happen. Thank you so much, Jasmine. Thank you.